clinch it out as well. Savic this time playing on the top and Bloody on the uh So you guys talked lane. about uh, Luna needing to live. Yes. And Luna's in the second lane. And let's see if... Is the Luna in front of anything that might kill it? Well, let's I, take a look I at the second lane. I can actually look at the lane right now because... Oh. The first turn is a little buggy. <laughs> I think we have I to see. wait for the players to uh, play in a card or something first. They're mulliganing right now. So that uh, that card, New <laughs> Orders, <laughs> that yeah. he has, uh, is... Uh, why doesn't he just cast that? Well, New Orders, he could change the arrow and hit this Beastmaster for five, but uh -huh. since you're not really killing anything, it's probably a waste of card. Mm, I yeah. see. Uh, but so we'll New Order here, and even if though you don't kill the Luna, you're putting a lot of pressure on her, and you want to kill the Luna because her passive ability, which is... Oh, well, if I could click on it. Check out the uh, the Grazing Shot in Bloody's hand as oh, well. That's, yeah. the, that's the combo, setting it up for Grazing Shot lethal. Yeah, that's a 200 IQ play. I didn't see that because <laughs> I'm not 200 IQ. So. so it finishes off the Luna, yeah. since the Grazing Shot can be played. So that's, that's a feels bad. Oh, very that much. That is a feels Luna's a hero you want to keep alive as much as possible because every turn she stays alive powers up the eclipses all in your deck. Well, I say yes or no. Like, it it does feel bad that your, your Luna is dead, but you also have to keep in mind, Bloody had to spend two cards yes. to get that done. And you will get Luna back eventually, so I say it's 50-50. Like, both players are okay. That's true as well. I want to point out like one one potential alternative play option uh, that wouldn't necessarily have been better, but to demonstrate game mechanics, if Bloody had deployed Sniper left uh, in this round, she could have used Grazing Shot from left to mid, killing the Luna there, yep. and this effectively would have delayed Luna's respawn by a full turn because she would have been killed kind of on the next turn before her active uh, or sorry her passive had a chance to go off. Yeah, Doctor Richard Garfield made a video talking about that the upkeep kill. Upkeep kill. Yeah. 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 Yep. Good stuff. But uh, putting the sniper left, which is actually the case here, means you're putting sniper in a very compromised position. You know, we we, we saw sniper last game doing crazy stuff, able to shoot, you know, damage across the board. But you gotta keep in mind, five six, very weak stats. Exactly. And that is the the downside of this hero. Sniper is kind of the epitome of a river hero. You want to play it in round three deployment. That weakness of having two snipers is you're going to have to play one of them sooner than round three, which means it will be kind of vulnerable to these situations here. Yeah. We have uh, Rebel Instigators in uh, Bloody's hand right now, but Kay. there's no creeps for that to really benefit off of. Well, uh, we'll talk about Rebel Instigator as it gets cast, but yep. basically if you land in front of a creep, they'll make more Rebel uh, Instigators. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like uh, like Ken pointed out, it's not necessarily good to play a card even though you just you have the mana for it. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to wait for the right situations. Yeah, and that's something that's really unique about Artifact compared to mm -hmm. other card games. Because usually, like, I mean, other card games, because they don't have systems like initiative or lane commitment, uh, they tend to fall into, like, just, like, you know, curving your mana. Use your mana more than your opponent. You yeah, usually try to be just efficient. win. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, if you don't use your mana, you keep initiative. Exactly. Just, uh, yeah. yeah. You can think of it kind of like buying initiative with mana. So like you always have that option to. It's it's almost like a hero power uh, in Hearthstone. You, and it gets more expensive as yeah, a, exactly. you get later. No, that's yeah. exactly right. So when it's turn nine or whatever, it co it'll cost uh, twelve. Yeah. yeah. To buy initiative, I guess. Yeah. If you yeah, just pass. Yeah. Eleven mana. Yeah. So bloody has eight gold to spare. And we're coming down on the Red Mist Pillager turn. This is kind of like yeah. a large part of what the game's all about. So you really want to play this and keep it alive. Uh, and against Bloody's deck that doesn't really have that much of an answer to it, that might be Savicha's win condition. Yeah. Uh, and you're looking at right lane for this, probably. It's kind of always a little scary to play in a lane with a black hero because they, yes. they could play really like easy damage effects like Raising Shot or yeah, Hip Fire. Those two snipers Slays, who have those active yeah. abilities. So uh, I got a question for you. If you want to keep the Luna alive, why would you play it just like kind of in the lane where Sven could just maybe uh, hit it right away? You definitely want to keep the Luna alive all the time, but you also got to keep in mind, sometimes you just got to cast spells, right? Like, yeah. mm -hmm. So casting, I mean, he has a way to actually taunt. So for example, ah, a taunt, see. you could make Sven, instead of attacking Luna, attack this creep, for example. But the problem with that as well is that Sven cleaves. So right now he's cleaving for three. So mm -hmm. even if you taunt the melee creep, three damage still kind of spills over to the Luna. Luna is not going to die. Let me just tell you that this turn, but she's also not going to walk away healthy. Yep. Uh, we're going to see. We're going to have to see how how Savic plans this out. He could uh, elect to actually do a pass to try to have Bloody spend her mana before playing Red Mist Pillager here. Uh, that's one of the tricks with Pillager. Decides to deploy a zombie. Okay. 
I think we might see some sort of combination of Ventriloquy and we might even see the Double Edge uh, being cast. So Double Edge is a Centaur signature card, which is give somebody plus A attack, but they lose A armor. Now, it just says give a red hero, not give an ally red hero. So there are some times where you could, for example, cast it on their guys, essentially give them minus A armor with one card and you know, finish it off with, with a damage spell. But we might not see that combination here as uh, Savage doesn't have those damage cards in hand. So that Pillager is going to make another one right now? That's yeah, not a the pillager. Rebel Instigator. Uh, it's sort of oh, like a sorry, Red Mist yeah. Pillager. Uh, specifically, it needs to deal battle damage to a creep, and then if it survives that, which yeah. it can off of the zombie, ooh, and there's the Ventriloquy. So this will stop the Instigator from going off. I really like this play. Yep, and Beastmaster was going to die anyway. May as well just yep. take the, uh, the damage for everyone. The zombie is still going to proc, though. That zombie that uh, Savit put down has a death shield, which essentially means that even if it dies in this turn, it, which it will from the cleave, yep. um, it's going to come back as a 2-1 creep. And that's why it doesn't have the X. That's why it doesn't have yeah. the X, so yep. Double edge is going to get cast. <laughs> Minus 37 on that beast. <laughs> he's <master>. taking 37. <laughs> <laughs> that's why, because he's taking 8 more damage from everybody. Yep. So kind of the math checks out. But does guarantee the kill on Sniper. So now Savic is thinking, you know, do I want to use Kraken Shell to take initiative uh, next turn? Is there anything in the mid lane he would want initiative for? Probably not. His hand is not yes. really beneficial for initiative. And mana is still at five, so there's not too many cards that are, like, big game changers yeah. that he can play. Yeah, I'd like to see a pass come out here. So far, Bloody hasn't drawn any of her six assassinates. Mm. She'll want to start seeing those soon as it reaches turn seven for her to cast That's them. That's perfect right now. You're, not, you're not drawing yeah, a dead exactly. card, right? It's great. It's actually Ooh. it's exactly what what Bloody wants in this situation. Yeah. God, I love this double edge. Mm. So, like I mentioned earlier, you could double edge your opponent's hero yeah. as well. So, basically, this gives Sven minus eight armor, and Luna was able to actually punch him down thanks yeah. to the minus eight. The danger with this is that you're increasing Sven's cleave since it's yes. with his attack. Yeah, so, Luna so went all the way down to one health off of that. But it worked out. So, good play here from Savic. I like it. Now Bloody's looking at this mid lane, has the ability to play one of two creeps. If you put yep. the Tyler Estate, that's going to bring Savisa's mana pool down to four instead of five. Um, or she could choose to put down the Glody Vandal, and that's going to do four damage. I really like playing the Tyler Estate here because mm -hmm. even though the, the mana subtraction isn't too useful this turn, Next turn, you're preventing an eclipse or a six kind of big six mana spells, yes. mm -hmm. which seems like Savich deck has a lot of whether it's thunderstorm or eclipse or anything of that nature. And uh, every time you play a creep, like he did in that lane, it will automatically hit what's in front of it. Is that how it works? So yes and no. Um, if you play a creep, for example, right now that just came down, mm -hmm. there's a creep in front of it, so yes, yes it will hit in front of it. But, but if there's nothing in front of it. Then it has a 25% chance of hitting left, 25 hitting right, and then 50% hitting straight. So I see. There are some times where you want to make sure you're placing it like really far away from a hero, so you don't want to hit them. Or sometimes you do want to hit them. So it, it's uh, very case dependent. So the game's getting into the later stages here. Uh, Bloody has the heavier deck. She has like the ability to kind of draw these uh, huge cards, not just assassinate, but also uh, roar as well as time, time of triumph. triumph. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is a sick late game deck. Yeah, and Savic hasn't put too much pressure out. He's pushing right tower very hard. He's gonna need to take it, but both of Bloody's other towers both have 40 health on them. Yeah, and he did have to end up using his red mist pillager to kill off the bounty hunter, and so now he doesn't have that kind of a uh, growing uh, army so to speak, to, to, to basically give them a win condition. This looks like a really good turn here for Savic. Mm -hmm. He could just pass, because right, right now he has initiative. And that means he's going to act first in this middle lane. Yes. Uh, but unfortunately, like I mentioned last turn, I was, I was going to say, yeah, oh, he could thunderstorm. thunderstorm and just like kill a lot of these stuff. But Tyler is a sensor now subtracting Maybe. one of his mana. This would have been a very sick turn for Savic. And uh, I just have a question about the top left. That means those heroes that are coming in, that means they're coming in next turn with the check mark? Yes. Yes. So three of uh, three of Bloody's heroes are dead right now. Right. Yeah, it's a pretty big rubber band in artifacts. Like, it's not so snowbally as it might seem, because, like, even if you, like, get, like, a triple kill on heroes, like, they mm -hmm. will come back strong in three turns with flexible deployment. And that's the scariest thing, right? You see three hero coming in, you don't know where your opponent's going to put it. So you could place them all left or all, all left, right. All left, yeah. all middle or one of each, and you just don't know. You kind of just have to guess, and that's the really tough part about Artifact. 
So he's just going to use his TP scroll on Ogre. Yep. Prevents his death, and now he'll also have the Ogre available to deploy in the next round, too. So, so you'll see the Ogre in the fountain sitting there with the check mark. And the Ogre would have died to the sniper's ability. Is that what, well, why he, he did it? Well, it was dying to both the, the Beastmaster and his loyal beast, uh, okay. just hitting it. Yeah. So, so Blood is deciding here whether to play the Ogre Conscript, uh, presumably on the right side of the lane. Yeah. Um, and I think I like this play. It's a little committal to this idea of like the mid-tower, but it kind of opens up ancient potential option. Yep. 24 damage now being done to Savita's tower. And Bloody's going to go ahead and TP that up. Uh, four heroes coming down next Four time. heroes yeah. coming down, yeah. Yep. And you got to play the Ogre on the right there because mm -hmm. otherwise it goes into the Tidehunter's Ravage range, which, keep in mind, stuns adjacent opponent units guaranteed. Yeah. Can we uh, check Savich's deck really quick? Yes, let's do that. Uh, Savich, I mean, his deck is no joke when it comes to late game as well. We're looking at three Eclipse, two Thunderstorm. A lot of AOE potential and also has roar, which is like ways to kind of interact with your opponent. Uh, but that's kind of like I think we're seeing the peak of Savage's deck right now, and basically has to pretty much win right now as well. We're gonna see four heroes Ooh, left. The quad lane. And let me tell you, Luna Eclipse very good at dealing like quite a bit of damage, but I don't think there's gonna be enough damage to go through all of this. Yeah, Savage does have the thunderstorm in hand and the initiative. Primal Roar does not have an option here. Beastmaster, the only red hero, yep. has no opposing units. You don't generally see four here on one lane, at least this early in the game. Mm. So, And the sniper thing? ability is going to kill the Luna. Yes. So he only has like one spell, right? Yeah. Are there any uh, items that Savit has not right now to... Traverse Cloak. Uh, there's a healing salve mm -hmm. as well, but Savit is also thinking about Primal Roar on the opponent's deck, right? Yep. Because right now Sven could Primal Roar and basically usher these two heroes away. There's a lot of things that Savage is thinking about. Can I save Luna? Should I save Luna? Should I cast Thunderstorm first and give up Luna's life? And I don't think any of those choices like a clear, oh yeah, you should just do this. Mm-hmm. It's going to TP out Luna. So that makes Luna available for deploy the next round. Yep, and Savic still has the option to play red cards here. Uh, Mercenary Exiles, for example. Uh, coming down and just like blocking the sniper for a turn wouldn't be too bad. Bloody still has the sniper headshot active, uh, which could do something like clear the two strength creep in front of Bounty Hunter, and allowing her to punch tower for 11. I think this deployment by Bloody, where she put all four hero left, might be a window for Savic to win. Really? Now Savic is thinking, look, I'm going to lose this lane, and that's okay, because you commit four heroes here. I'm going to just try my best to win middle, and try my best to win right. Which is not impossible, now that you have Luna being deployed in the other lane. Well. I think I do actually like Bloody's deployment, solely because she committed the Ogre Conscript mid in the last turn. Sure. Uh, and mid looks to me pretty indefensible on Savic's side. I mean, Thunderstorm just clears a sniper, right? Yeah, that's true. Definitely might have been an overcommitment of Bloody to go four into one lane. Yeah. Th this is potentially hugely punishable. I mean, keep in mind, like, w death kind of represents mobility, right? Yes. When you kill an opponent's hero, you're kind of like buying and force feeding them a TP scroll, right? Um, no joke, I will sniper and shoot yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even joking. Because yeah. you don't need a sniper here. There's yeah. too many heroes. There's too many here. heroes. Yeah. So you'd have him shoot himself so he could. He will die to the again. loyal yeah. beast and deploy again two turns. Yeah, because oh, he, he, hero death is really not that dissimilar from like a TP scroll. Yeah. It's kind of more expensive, but it gives you what you want. And now this thunderstorm with initiative, like plus the potential blocker here, Lumi might have been right. Like this, this is a completely defensible lane with four heroes stranded left. Yeah. So he'll Savage will take seven, but taking seven is not the same as taking thirteen here. So he'll survive. And all of a sudden, it's it's uh, these two versus no hero for this turn and yeah. next turn. Mm -hmm. And same thing here. There's there's no hero for Bloody coming into this lane. Yeah, it turns into like a 5v1, basically, because right. Bloody has four heroes on a lane that's kind of already won. And this is the real like skill and artifact, because there's a risk to overcommitting. Yeah. Now, Bloody does have six copies of Assassinate in her deck. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't drawn them yet, but yep. they're coming. Yeah. Exile's going to come down. And now, Mercenary Exile has an active where you could just spend all your money. And you're essentially paying the Exile to, you know, Mercenary to give her more attack and health. Which might be a might be a play here. Yeah, if so he has 11 gold. Yeah. Eclipse is a great draw. Yes. Oh, and, and gets that initiative. Back, yeah. 
as he wants to start casting some some uh some key cards first. Okay, and now the mm -hmm. the key to this entire game Ooh. has shifted. It was left to lane just last turn, but now it's mid lane. Yeah. Like things are being mixed up. And Bloody is realizing that she needs to be able to punch through this mid. She needs to find an assassinate and snipe this ogre out. Oh, but now Luna's coming back. So what we thought is like Luna's gonna abandon this lane and just go right. So TP it out and came right back. Came yeah. right back. But now she has initiative again to cast Eclipse. This is a huge eclipse. Yeah. Lucent Beam is going to snipe a target. If it's Bounty Hunter or this creep, melee creep, she's very happy. Oh, that's one copy of Assassinate being drawn. The Luna here commits the Eclipse, I think. If you're yeah, going to yes. drop Luna here, you have to open with Eclipse here. How many charges are we looking at? We're looking at six charges. So six. 18 total damage to this lane. That could be completely devastating. The Sniper is going to go down, as is the Bronze Legionnaire. Uh, even the Bounty Hunter or the Beastmaster might. Oh, sniper is going to go down, but looks like the bounty will survive. Oof. Not fortunate, not fortunate rolls for Savich there. Yeah. yeah. Pretty bad assassinate, or pretty bad rolls on the Eclipse, I have to say. Yeah. So now if you're bloody, do you assassinate this lane or the ogre in the mid lane? Because mid lane is all of a sudden a real threat to your loose condition. Is there any com a thought of assassinating a creep as well? <laughs> <laughs> to get the it. seven Ooh. damage? No. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> the, oh, the, cross, the cross <laughs> arrow was like, ooh, yeah. Yeah. So you're going to go for the creep. Because going for the creep gives you the lethal, technically. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And there was nothing that uh, Savich played last turn to block the ogre. So All right. uh, one of the two cards that he drew this turn would have had to have been an answer. And that would have been a relatively safe play. I think this is the first game we've casted that's like super close and tight. Yeah. I, I don't know who's going to win this game. Yeah. Obviously, we know Bloody's deck is going to be stronger in the in the late game, but given the fact that she's only drawn a single copy of Assassinate, it's uh, it's hard to say. Yep. And now Luna's going to survive um, with that shield yeah, equipped. For the job. And yeah. Bloody's going to put on that uh, Book of the Dead to just get some extra HP on uh, Bloodseeker right now, too. And Luna staying alive is a really Bounty big Hunter. deal for Savich. He needs access to his blue cards. He needs to draw something like another Eclipse to kind of just like I'm wipe dead. Bloody's board in the next Promise. turn. Mm -hmm. Also, you're just scared if you're bloody here. You see a Luna still alive. You know Eclipse could be coming down. Thunderstorm could be coming down. Yeah. It may kind of make you act in a different way. Maybe, you know, you know, fight for initiative or assassinate this Luna or something like that. Yeah, Luna is just one of the, like, scariest blue heroes in the entire game. Like, her signature card can completely devastate a board. Yep, and we did see Bloody pick up a TP scroll from uh, the previous shopping phase. Yeah. Is there any hero that you'd think... Uh, should get a TP at the moment. What's in that last lane? There's nothing there's, there. There's no heroes. No heroes in the last lane. So still committing into just uh, leaving three heroes there for now. Yep. So looks like both players are straight up passing. Yeah, Savich has the option to pump his mercenary exiles plus five, plus five with his 10 gold. There it is. I like it. And that's going to put a lot of pressure, threatening this tower on a clock of two. Yeah. So all of a sudden, and now he gets yeah, to even okay. TP yeah. out the hero as well. Mercenary yeah. exiles is doing enough pressure here. Looks like Savich is really committed into defending that first lane. Yeah, and this is kind of what Artifact is. It's, it's kind of like a dance back and forth of like, you know, will I play for this lane? Will I play for this lane? Like Savich kind of bailed out of left lane and now has recommitted to it. If anything, now Bloody could kind of do the same in right lane. Bloody could actually look at that TP and be like, okay, well now I can defend right lane, right? Like that's yeah. an option. Looks like Centaur is going to be jumping left. And this is a pretty dangerous deploy for both sides. There's a lot of red heroes on both sides, and there's Beastmaster Roar. Yeah. So <laughs> a lot of these heroes could be kind of shoved into different lanes. And Bloody still looks mm. like she's just in a dominating position. She yeah. only needs 15 total damage on both of these towers, whereas Savich needs 13 on right, which isn't going to happen for at least two turns. And then he needs to find a way to get through Bloody's heroes both mid or I either mid or left. Uh, but Bloody's not drawing her powerful cards, which is the five copies of Assassinate and that one copy of Time of Triumph. Or the Beastmaster Roars. She like her she has so many powerful cards left in her deck and she's not drawing any of them. I think we have a seven charge eclipse now. This is, is right? seven, yep. so that's twenty one yeah. damage spread. Yep. That's so that's two two charges off of being able to wipe Bloody's entire board in yeah. this case. And Bloody could also add more HP to the board by summoning Call of the Wild or equipping a Furline Mantle. This Eclipse could be very nasty. Yep, there it is. So if this Eclipse drops, it should take down Bounty Hunter. If it's lucky, it might take down Beastmaster with it. All right, here we go. Seven charges. Oh, rip. there it is. Beastmaster, one more? Nope. Some unlucky yeah. rolls, I got to <laughs> say. That's rough. And now uh, the Beastmaster, since he's still alive for now, he can summon another Loyal Beast to block either the Beastmaster or the Luna. 
Yep. And Stonehall Elite can actually also go in front of the Luna, uh, blocking her and staying alive at the same time. If Bloody wants it, Bloody's still in the driver's seat of this game. She just needs to find a way to punch through just a little bit more damage on this left lane. And with that, Tresden's uh, oh. the Beastmaster. Oh, oh, hi. Hey, hi. Hey, hi. Hyped. Hello. Hello. Oh, Hyped look at in. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hyped is like now sitting with us on the couch. She's not going to cast Tresden here. Oh, no, she's going to summon first and then yes. cast it. Yeah, yeah based standards. on the placement of that wolf, because yeah. it buffs afterwards. Yep. So. Exactly. And with the Stonehall Elite, uh, it gains one armor every time, right? Including when you play the Tresden standards. So if that oh, tower brush hasn't there. come down, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so Tresden standard, it's a card that kind of just gives you more and more benefit as you cast more red cards. So yes. it's going to pop it on this hero and then cast Stonehall Elite afterwards. Yep, and that will push through some damage uh, since it's pretty much uncontested right now. Seven damage going through to the Tower of Savits. Yep, that would, uh, it, with two procs of Tresden standards, that would take Savich's tower down to two health. Uh, what's mid looking like? Because Savich still has to block mid. Mid is that technically <laughs> dimen has ravage. Has dimensional. The ravage oh, is no, no, no. Yeah, no mana for all of this. Yeah. Ravage and Primal Roar are both major options mid. Could even Sucker Punch and save himself the Ravage if he has the initiative. I actually like that a lot. Ravage yeah. is a lot easier to use, and Sucker Punch gets the job done here. My blade is home. All right, Tresden Sanders coming down. Okay. Ooh, not going to put the Stonehall. Save the Stonehall elite. So Savich has the initiative here, and remember, initiative is everything. There's the Ravage. Yeah. Is, is it going to stun 50, the Ogre? 50? Oh, stuns oh, everything, oh. everything. Yeah. Savich. Finally, the RNG coming back in his right. favor. <laughs> so technically still alive. Mm -hmm. it hasn't lost a single tower yet. Uh, looks like we're going to see a teleport scroll back out. Yep, just keeping snipers safe. Okay. And we're going to have to see like if there's any place for initiative here. Savich has initiative off that TP. He's going to keep it. He's going to pass. Yep. We're going to go all the way back to board number one, Dude, where this, this initiative is going to be held. <laughs> this mercenary exile is going all the distance. Okay, yeah. it's going to take the tower. Pumping that mercenary really helps. Now, now Savich only needs to deal 10 extra damage on left. This game is all about left lane right now. If Savich can deal 10 damage on left, even before Bloody can do anything, like if he can block either mid or left from taking just a little bit of damage, Savich might win this. Yeah. yeah Bloody's hand is looking very yes. dry. This yes. is not the time he He needs that third eclipse. He needs that right now. Five more assassinate in the deck. Yeah, Three but Primal Roar. Primal Roar yeah. got opened up. Yeah. The Beastmaster in front of the Sniper and the Sven. Primal Roar off of initiative, stuns the Sniper, moves the Sven. But Sven being moved to either other lane is not good for Zavich. It will choose Sven and dump him randomly into one of the uh -oh. two other lanes. Where's, Where's it going? Uh, left. Perfect. Go middle. Mid. That's good. That's yeah, good. Yeah. That's what he wanted. Yeah. But middle is still a threat. Bloody still just has to take the middle tower. This is really close. Yeah. Also, you could start throwing creeps with better late than never yes. into the middle lane. You cast a knight as well. You've got potion of knowledge for an extra draw. You've got three more mana to play out here. He needs nine extra damage on this tower. Bloody can't use headshot. Her sniper is still stunned. Yeah. Yep. She can't cast anything at this point. So let's look at the middle lane. Is the tower going to die this turn? I don't think so, because Ogre, Ogre could cast Ogre casts so. another yep. yeah. better late than never. Uh, yeah. But, you know, Beastmaster Roar Savich can open some spots. might have this. Yeah, the Primal Roar is going to get exchanged because Bloody got blocked out of this lane. She will have initiative for mid lane, and the Primal Roar will likewise mess up Savich's board. He's got the potion. He needs a Kraken Shell for initiative. Okay. Not going to grab initiative. Now, keep in mind that he hasn't lost any tower yet, despite them being at three health yes. and four health. So yes. it's okay for him to lose middle. It's not great yes. because your tower is so low, but it's not like you're losing the game straight. And it's not, po it's not impossible for this game to come down to a tie. If Savich takes right, Bloody takes mid, and then they both take left next turn, sure. that will be a tie. Yeah. Bloody's in a position where that could happen. Bloody's hand is very bad yeah. considering her deck. Has she, has she drawn a, a, only one assassinate? One assassinate. One assassinate. Yeah. And so she still has time. She's got a lot of well. power in her deck. Yeah. Yep. So hype. I gotta ask you, mm -hmm. who do you think is gonna win this game? Just based on this, this is current so state. Close. This yeah. is like, it's looking like Savitz. I think However, has I'm, I'm pretty yeah. sure in Savitz's mind he thinks he's about to lose. <laughs> he could never predict this for yeah, the hand from Bloody. Exactly. So I imagine it's very tense. So on we've both got sides. we've got options. We've got the primal roar here on Bloody. She has initiative. I think th these games are showcasing you very well how powerful initiative is. Yeah. yeah. Like in these last turns of the game, it is game deciding. So it's actually kind of scary to roar here. Yeah, it is because both of these heroes could go left, or he could go right. Think about <laughs> it. If it goes Just right, right, that's then, great know? for Bloody. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. There's the option to only toss one. Oh, never mind. I'm sorry. You've got to take that roar here yeah, you if gotta. you're bloody. There's, I think there is just no choice. That will represent the lethal she needs on this tower. She's got the double deployment you can see in the upper left. Double deployment left next turn, and then punch through to deal just the three damage she needs on Savicha's last tower. I re actually really yeah. like her not using it here and going for a lethal with the minions in the... Oh. Because then it would lock down the first lane, which she really needs it for. 
That's a good roll for oh, Savic. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's good for Savic, yeah. So Savic has a few options here. He can't really defend this tower. The best thing to do is probably pass yeah, for initiative. Yeah, that's the pass, right? That's the pass that's for initiative. That's the best, yeah. best option. There's the do. roar again Savic has. How's that roar looking at left lane? It well, stuns. there's a hero in front, so yeah. that's pretty good. But there's two more heroes coming in. But that, that initiative is going to have to matter. If you're Savic, you give it up. There it is. I love to see that pass. Yeah. Now, Bloody, there's not that much to do. Uh, you can just, like, yeah, you just pa pass, pass it back. She's got the mid lane, but now Savic takes right. All right. Here's three, his tower. Three HP yeah. versus nine at first tower. <laughs> this is going to be pass this is back. close. Yeah. yeah. It's going to depend so what Bloody draws as well. If Savic Bloody draws, time of triumph. Yeah. It's going to be, at worst, a draw yeah. for her. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not necessarily. Both of these heroes could deploy adjacent to the sniper. True. In which case, yeah. roar them away. if both of these heroes deploy next to the sniper on either side of it, the game is over. Savic has first play, primal roar here. Ooh. It will lock that's, out the Beastmaster. That's, that's, that's good. very good. That's, that's good. Bloody yeah. only has access to black off of Bounty Hunter. She needs to draw something high quality black. She needs. Primal roar. That's not it. That's okay. not that's it either. Not it. I think Savic roar. has this. You just yeah. roar straight up. And you still have four mana left to play Dimensional Portal in case. A blocker gets opened up, yep. so it's it's looking like it's unlosable for Savic. What about what about the defensive potential on Bloody? She can jump with Assassin's Apprentice. I mean, Primal Roar is going to leave the sniper there, and yes. the creep that's going to be freed up off of the Beastmaster is only going to deal two damage. That's not necessarily enough. Bloody is going to have one chump block off of Assassin's Apprentice. Whoa. Okay. This opens up Primal Roar. Bloody can roar in front of Beastmaster now. Yeah. It still looks okay with Dimensional Portal. I think uh, Savic is going to be fine. Yeah. Mm. It's yep. fine Luckily for now. Luckily the ogre is here. Mm. The portal will be blocking this creep off of Savic's okay. tower. His tower will be saved. Both of them need one more damage on these towers <laughs> oh right now. Goodness, but don't, so don't, don't don't forget that this guy can make more more uh, zombies to block. Book of the yep. Dead Book has of the Dead has one charge right yeah. now. One charge just enough. Oh, multicast. Multicast. Oh my god, I on think that's the second that's dimensional enough. portal. Oh, that's, enough. that's enough. Okay, so right? apprentice could come down to block one. It just blocks one. That's not enough. There's no way for Bloody to punch through. That ogre. <laughs> <laughs> so being blasted into the first lane. All of us calling for the primal roar on Savic's side, yeah. but the fact that he didn't primal roar allows him to cast a bunch of blue spells. It, was that just a better play? It might have been. Yeah. Stonehall Lee will be blocking this, but it won't do enough. The yeah. pass from Savic and Bloody has no response except for one zombie. D Portal will come down, closing the game out in favor of Savic. Oh my goodness. There it is. That was a uh, that was a close one, dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is a crazy comeback. His tower left at three. His tower mid at four. Four makes it Look work. At <laughs>